What's up, John? Hey, bud. Welcome to town. Man, thank you. Yeah, um, I guess, uh, you know, what uh, I would imagine there were a lot of uh, people vying for your uh, attention there as a free agent. Um, you know, were, were there multiple teams involved and, and what made you, what were some of the reasons that you wound up picking the Titans? Yeah, man, uh, multiple teams were involved. Uh, but, you know, just when my agent called me with the Titans, man, just just all made sense, uh, you know, from the team standpoint, really. You know, uh, I wanted to be on a winning team already and come in a program that, that already has described and, uh, and be able to just help out as much as I can. So, you know, it, it all made sense just to be a part of this organization. Gotcha. And I know, uh, I'm sure you, you're aware of the numbers. Titans had a, a grand total of 19 sacks last year. How can you help uh, change that and, and make it better going forward? Uh, definitely, man. I'm going to go out and just play on my hair on fire. Um, you know, just trying to get out the quarterback as much as I can, you know, creating pressure. You know, um, trying to get the ball out, you know, you know, just everything I can do, you know, just to be, to, to keep the train rolling, man, and, uh, and to help those guys on D. You know, I'm, I'm all with it. Teresa. And Bud, uh, as somebody who went to Kentucky, uh, you know, how much did uh, Tennessee make some geographical sense for you as well? Huh. Uh, definitely, you know, it made, it made sense uh, geographically, like you said, uh, you know, being a UK guy and also being from Georgia in the middle, it's right in the middle of both. So, you know, I can get those fans that, that follow me uh, from my college career in Kentucky and also the fans that follow me from, since my high school days in Georgia. And, you know, uh, capture that again, you know, being in a central location is always, is always key. Tehran. Yeah, welcome to Nashville. But uh, looking at your career just over the years, you know, it seems like the last two or three years, you've really kind of hit a mark and established yourself. What has been the key to just finding that groove and being able to, to settle in the way you have? Uh, man, you know, just being on the field a lot more. Uh, also, you know, just changing my training as well. I know uh, my second year in the league, I missed like 10 games. So, you know, uh, also just being healthy, man, and, uh, you know, that played a, a tremendous role in it. And so now, uh, uh, since I hit that scribe, man, I'm coming back stronger than ever, you know, and just and just continuing to develop my game, and keep my arrow pointed upward, and uh, and just make sense of everything like that. And when you look at a guy like Harold Landry and, and Derek Robes and some of the other guys they have, how can you help them just like contribute and establish that that pass rushing culture that this organization needs? Yeah, definitely, man. Those guys already um are, are working together as a group. So I'm gonna come in and uh, you know just you know just uh, try to bring us a little bit closer. You know, uh, making sure guys are uh, you know just learning from each other. The biggest that's the biggest part when you're on the team. You want to make sure you feed off each other. You feed out the energy from the other guys. You know, you're taking advice from the other guys on the team. You know, just making that just making just making that uh, statement that way. Jim Wyatt. Hey, bud. Uh, uh, Teron mentioned. Harold, how much how much familiarity with do you have with other guys on this defense, and uh, how much you looking forward to playing with guys like Jeffrey Simmons and Kevin Byard, maybe some other guys you're familiar with? Man, a lot of those guys are uh, established. Man, you know Byer, he does what he does. He's one. Of the, he's he's a great one. You know uh, Simmons coming in, man. You know uh, young guy, but he's a tremendous player. You now I was training him in the off season a couple times. You know, it's a lot of other guys on the on team that are just making plays and, and always in the mix, man, like uh, Brown as well. So, man, uh, I'm excited to be a part of these, this team with these guys, you know, coming in, you know, just trying to just be the best I can be myself, not not only for me, but for them, you know, that they deserve it. And, uh, and I feel like the team deserves it as well. Buck? And, and how do you feel from a health standpoint? And, and you go ahead, Jim. Are you ready? Will you be ready to go? How do you feel from a health standpoint, bud? And will you be ready to roll uh, when camp starts? Oh, yeah, definitely. I'll be ready in camp. Uh, I'll be full speed in camp, full steam ahead, uh, you know, getting back in the groove and uh, just making sure, you know, uh, I'm healthy then. But, you know, I'll be healthy way before camp. I'll be full speed training in May. And, uh, you know, I'm excited about that progress and the progress that I made so far in, uh, in XOs in Arizona. You know, that's why I'm training at now, doing my thing, trying to make sure that, no, I'm, I'm the best tip-top shape when I get back. Buck? 
Hold on, bud. How big a difference has Chuck Smith made for your kind of development throughout the course of your career? I know you spent a lot of time working with him. Yeah, man, Chuck is a great guy, man, to work with, get foundational, get foundational things from. Uh, you know, he's always, you know, uh, just to teach the technique. I tell, I tell every pass rusher, man, you know, when you want to start, when you're trying to start your pass rush repertoire and getting better and better at pass rush, you got to kind of start with Chuck Smith because he always lays the foundation. And then you got also other pass rush specialists too, you know, who we work with, uh, like BT Jordan and uh, and Mark Hall, people like that, man. It's 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 a, it's a, it's a uh, translation from from Chuck being a started being able to start from Chuck to go to guys like BT and Mark Hall, you know, those guys instilling the different types of techniques into them. You know, and Chuck laying the foundation. It all plays hand in hand, man. And uh, it's a great opportunity to be able to work with a guy like Chuck. He's one of the uh, uh, one of the greatest to ever do it at, at that. You know, it's just also, you know, all those guys, man, just, just awesome. I work with them and keep learning from those guys, BT, Mark. You know, man, it's, it's, it's a great situation to be in when you're with those type of guys, learning in the offseason, not only learning on the field, but also learning mentally. Luke? Bud, how much have you communicated at this point with uh, Vrabel and Bowen, and how do you feel that you fit into their defense and the scheme here? Man, uh, I've been I've been communicating with them since the since I found out I was gonna come be a Titan. Uh, I'm excited, man. They're excited for me. Um, the number one thing right now is making sure I'm healthy. But other than that, man, uh, I'm I'm trying to come in and you know be ahead of the playbook. So as soon as I get as soon as I get a chance to get the playbook, I'm gonna be all in head first into that. Make sure I learn that right away. So it's no step backs on that on that part for me. And, you know, uh, the communication is going to stay the same. Man. I'm always going to be trying to find out what they're looking for, trying to find out uh, things that they think we need to get better on as a unit so that, that so when I come in, I can already be a step ahead on that on that aspect of it. You, you mentioned playing with your hair on fire. Can you elaborate a little bit on that and what sort of separates you from, from maybe other players at your position in, in that regard? Yeah, man, just chasing the ball, man, running to the ball, no matter what it is. Um, if it's a pile, get in the pile, get dirty. A guy running the ball, chase the ball, man, get down the line of scrimmage and make sure you're tackling the ball line of scrimmage. Never turn down contact. You know, just you know, just trying to make as many plays as you can. Not looking around for somebody else to make a play, but, you know, uh, putting it upon yourself to be like, I'm going to make the play each and every time. So you always have that mindset in the back of your head, like, uh, it's a big play need to make. I know I got to be the one to make the play. Not necessarily saying that, uh, that's just a mindset that I have. And I feel like everyone on the field should feel the same way. Like every every player should be like, all right, this moment is crunch time. I'm about to make the play. So, you know, that's just a mindset that every guy should have on the, on the field at the same time to make the unit great. Paul. Hey, bud, uh, you mentioned the guys here and, uh, and, and your respect for them. You, you come from a great uh, defensive unit with, with TJ and, and Cam and Stefan. Uh, and, and you working together is obviously a, a great group. Titan signing you in large part so you could lead their group and infuse uh, infuse it with some talent. Uh, what's it going to be like to kind of be asked to be the lead dog uh, coming from a group where you had maybe four lead dogs? Yeah, man, sometimes, you know, uh, that's, that, that's how it happens in the business world. Uh, you got four lead dogs, but now we're going to come make – on this team, we're going to make 11 lead dogs on defense. So, you know, uh, we instill that into everybody, you know, uh, making sure everybody's on the same page. It'd be 11 guys on the field, 11 guys want to make sure we take your face off. So that's that's the fun part about it. And uh, as long as everybody on the same page, man, it's going to be a great time. And, uh, you know, and I already see those guys already moving that way. They have been doing it for the past couple of years. And so, man, you know, uh, I'll come in and bring a couple of things of my game. And, uh, I'll take a, a couple of things for those guys' game as well. And, they, you know, they can show me the ropes. And also, we can come collectively together, you know, and just make something special. How extensive is your repertoire uh, in terms of pass rush moves? Is there stuff you're still looking to add, or is it a matter of refining things? Uh, definitely refining things. But it's always, as a pass rush, you always want to be one step ahead of the offensive line. So, you know, uh, maybe a new move that guys aren't really doing yet around the league because they want to start – so uh, basically, like the cross shot, uh, a lot of guys start using the cross shot. So now a lot of linemen are prepared for the cross shot, and we're doing it. So now we have to go into the lab and try to find another move to compensate for that. 
you know, uh, anything like that, you got to stay a step ahead, man, because, you know, O-linemen are really working in the offseason as well, just like we're working in the offseason. Thanks. David Beauclair. Sticking with the pass rush, bud, what, what's your feeling on how important the call is in getting there versus a guy's desire just to get there and get to the quarterback? I mean, the call is the call. You got to be able to, you know, just win, you know, uh, be able to win, uh, despite if it's a scheme. If it's a scheme, you got to do what you're told to do in that scheme. Always never go against the grain. You know, you want to make sure, like, unless you just know it's a, unless you know it's 100% what you're thinking. But, you know, man, staying within the scheme, but it's the want to, man. You got to be able to make sure that you want to, calculating your risk, calculating what move you're going to do, you know, just beat them to the spot. Corey Curtis. Hey, Bud, uh, talking about the want to, you know, everybody comes into the league with that chip on their shoulder, and now you're getting paid. What's the key to keeping that chip on your shoulder for you? Oh, yeah, keeping the ladder climbing. You know, you got to keep climbing the ladder, keep climbing the ladder. When you get to one, when you get to one point in your life, man, it's never it, it, just you can't, you can't, you're not gonna be able to reach the sky. So what what I, what I mean by that is, it's always room for improvement. So the more you climb, the higher you climb. Even a skyscraper, you still got a lot of ways to go before you touch the cloud. So uh, you know, keeping that hunger and the, and that attitude, you know, um, making sure that I'm I'm still had that fire put in my belt, seeing other guys around me get better and better. You know, that's the main part about it. Couple more for you, bud. Gentry. Okay, Glennon. Yeah, bud. I, I know you mentioned earlier, of course, uh, a lot of those talented teammates in, in Pittsburgh. Um, you know, I guess there there are some analysts, and I'm certainly not saying I'm one that that say some of your numbers were were boosted a little bit by having such good teammates and having such a a blitz heavy scheme as well. Um, what do you say? I mean, I'm sure you've heard that kind of thing before. What what do you say uh, about that? Yeah, I mean, just turn the tape on. You see the one on ones. If I get a one on one, I win. Uh, with chips, I win. Uh, in the run game, you no know, outside linebacker playing the run like me in the league. So, I mean, I don't know what people get that from. You just can't you, you can't get mad because I got other great players on the team as well. It's just anywhere you go. You know, there's always going to be excuses why people do this and why people do that. But if you turn the tape on, you see me hit a running back three yards behind the line of scrimmage. How can you say that's because of someone else? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, I went Try rush. Gentry again. Rush in one second. How can you say that's because of someone else? Yeah, hey, bud, I know it's kind of uh, part of your story that you were, you know, maybe a little lightly regarded as a recruit coming out of high school. And that was uh, – I wanted to ask how much motivation that was for you, you know, becoming the player you did at Kentucky. And, you know, talking about cl keep climbing the ladder, did it really kind of start there with, with you trying to prove yourself in the SEC? Yeah, man, it started from – it started from being young, man, being from a small town, man. Uh, you know, being from a small town, uh, not really having a lot of exposure uh, – not a lot of money in the town and not a lot of money in the city. You know, being overlooked our whole life, you know, uh, not really, people really not thinking you're gonna amount to anything. So, you know, that kind of like started a chip on it right there. You know, uh, then also getting to Kentucky, not getting offers until my senior year when I went to a camp, which I had to drive myself to and my coach, uh, transmission blew up actually in Tennessee, coming to the University of Tennessee, his transmission went out. So that was like my first camp ever coming to. And, uh, you know, started getting attention then. And, uh, you know, ever since then, man, you know, just want to make sure that you, you're one of the ones that people talk about. So, you know, like I said, it's never enough room for improvement. So each and every year, I'm trying to see growth in my game until like I, until like I feel it's like it's time to give it up. Teron. Yeah, but a few years ago, you made the proclamation you wanted to get a sack for each of your pit bulls. Uh, I want to ask you how that kennel was coming along. Is that something you still have going? And what is it that attracts you so much to, to that dog? Man, I love dogs, man. I've been loving dogs since I was, uh, since I was young, man. Uh, you know, um, the bully breed, man, uh, it's, it's a special breed. You know, none of them come out looking the exact same. And a lot of people use them as companion dogs now. So, you know, I have, I have like 13 dogs right now. So, you know, it's always fun just to go home, let all of them out at the same time. They hit, let them run in the water. 
that I'm running out of yard. Uh, just something I got, just a love I got for him. And, uh, you know, it's, it's always fun, man. I've been having dogs. It, it, I don't feel right unless I got a dog. It's just a part of my life. Last question. And, oh, go ahead, John. I was just going to say, just for fun, a proclamation, you're going to have a sack for each each pit this year? Oh, well, definitely. Let's do it. You know, I'm always trying to get the best I can, the most I can, and uh, – you know, uh, I don't like to put a I don't like to put a limit on my on, on my sack because you know sometimes you think about a number you 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 will settle for that number. So I just want to make sure that I'm getting the most I can and capitalize on every opportunity I have because uh, you know uh, it's it's hard to get those moments back. I like that. Appreciate it. Sure. <laughs> Last question, Jim Wyatt. Hey, bud, I know your buddy, Ramon Foster, has talked you up on the radio here in the morning. You probably consulted with a lot of people. Did you talk to him at all through this process, and what did he tell you? Yeah, it's crazy because uh, as soon as uh, we found out they weren't going to franchise me again, Ramon came back and said, uh, man, you might want to come to Tennessee. And we had a conversation like, man, I wanted to go to Tennessee last year if I would have been, been a free agent. And so he was like, yeah, man, they may come around, so – Free agency came and uh the day of and they called. And uh you know, I, I, as soon as he my agent told me the Titans, he was telling me other teams and saying this and that. But as soon as he said the Titans, right away I said, man, go ahead and negotiate. Let's get it done. So that's exactly where we wanted to go.